Hello everyone, I welcome you all to the 15th lecture of this course. The 15th lecture is on nanotechnology in organ printing. So in the previous lecture we have learned how to make artificial tissues and artificial cells. In today's lecture we are going to learn how to make artificial organs using organ printing technology. So in this lecture we are going to learn what is organ printing, types of 3D printing and what are the various 3D bioprinting approaches available and also we are going to learn what is the role of nanotechnology in organ printing. So let us see why we need organ printing. So according to American organ donor website at least 1,20,000 people are in the waiting list for organ transplantation and each day at least 22 people lose their life due to lack of suitable organ transplantation. So you can think about the whole world how many people are losing their life without suitable organ transplant. So let us see the statistics in India. So in India almost 1.5 lakh people need a kidney but only 3000 of them receive it and 90% of people in waiting list die without getting an organ. So India's annual liver transplant recruitment is 25,000 but we manage only about 800 and 70% of liver transplants are taken care of by a live donor and remaining 30% are depend on cadaver donation, cadaver means dead body. So let us see exactly how much is the human body worth. Okay? So you can see the cost of each organ. Okay? So you should be thankful to your parents who given this much worth property to you. So to make this organ, what are the approaches available? So we are going to see one by one in this lecture. So let us see what is organ printing. So it is integrating the biology and 3D printing technology. So it is a process where an artificial organ can be created using a 3D printer or bio printer. So let us see the definition of organ printing. So organ printing is a rapid prototyping computer aided 3D printing technology. So it is based on layer by layer deposition of cell on a 3D gel with a sequential maturation of the printed construct into perfused and vascularized living tissue or organ. So in this organ printing, so we are going to print the artificial organ using the 3D printing technology and here we are going to use biological cells as a ink okay? and we will be printing the organ on the 3D environment and we will make the complete artificial organ. So let us see what is an organ printer. It is incorporates two technologies that is tissue engineering and a 3D printer. So it is similar to your normal uh, printer but instead of paper we will be using the petri dishes and instead of ink we will be using the cells and chemical called crosslinker. So here we are going to take the cells from the patient's own body. So there will not be any immunorejection of the organ. So this is a conceptual bioprinter. In future we may get this kind of uh, bioprinter to make the customized organ for the patient's need. So let us see these types of 3D printer. So there are uh, three types. First one is selective laser sintering. Next one is thermal inkjet printing. And third one is fused deposition modeling. Okay. So the selection of 3D printer based on the material which you want to use and also how the layers in the finished product are bonded. So let us see what is selective laser sintering. So here SLS printer uses powdered material as a substrate for printing new objects and here this laser draws the shape of the object in the powder and it fusing it together. And next one is thermal inkjet printing. So here inkjet printing is a non-contact technique so that uses thermal electromagnetic or physioelectric technology to deposit tiny droplets of ink. Okay, it can be actual ink or it can be any other material onto a substrate according to the digital instructions. So based on the uh, instructions it will make the particular organ or scaffold for the organ. And third method is FDM that is fused deposition model and here the printer uses a print head which is similar to an inkjet printer but instead of ink here the beads of heated plastic are released from the print head as it moves and it builds the object in the thin layer. So this is a typical process for bioprinting 3D tissues. So it has various steps. Let us see one by one. So the first step is imaging. So if you want to make the particular organ, heart or liver, so you have to do the imaging using X-ray, CT scan and MRI so that you will get the complete idea about the organ. So then based on that we have to select the design approach. So the design approach can be biomimicry or self assembly or mini tissues and once you selected the design approach then we have to select the suitable material. So it depends on the organ which you want to print 
you have to select the synthetic polymers or natural polymers and which should mimic like your extracellular matrix. Then the fourth step is selection of cells. The cells can be differentiated cells or it can be stem cells. So, you can add the cells on the scaffold and it can make the particular type of organ. And once you selected this material as well as the cell, then you have to bioprint that particular organ using inkjet printer or micro extrusion or laser assisted printing. So, these techniques I will explain later in detail. So, once the particular organ is printed, so the printed organ will be placed in the bioreactor and it will be allowed to maturation. So, once the organ is uh, matured in presence of chemical and mechanical signals and this organ will be uh, tested in a bioreactor whether it is performing the per function properly then it could be transmitted to the patient. So, let us see the steps in detail. So, as I told you earlier the first step is creating a blueprint of an organ with its vascular architecture and second step is generating a bioprinting process plan and third one is isolating the stem cells or the suitable cells and uh, the fourth step is differentiating the stem cells into organ specific cells. If you want to make the heart or liver accordingly you have to differentiate the stem cells into organ specific cells and fifth point is like preparing the bio ink reservoirs with organ specific cells, blood vessels and support medium and load them into the printer. Then you print the complete organ, then place the bioprinted organ in a bioreactor prior to transplantation. So, these are the various steps in the bioprinting of 3D tissues or organ. So, how organ printing works? Uh, the procedure of organ printing can be subdivided into three sequential steps. The first step is pre-processing, next one is processing and third one is post-processing. So, let us see these steps in details. So, in the pre-processing, the first step you will be doing the bioimaging of the particular organ, then based on the CAD, you will be making the blueprint of the particular organ. And in the second step is processing. So, you will be using this bio ink, here the bio ink is your cells and your bio paper is the scaffold. So, based on this bio ink and bio paper, you will print the particular organ using the bio printer. So, once the organ is printed, you will be adding the maturogens that is your chemical signal or mechanical signal to make this artificially printed organ into uh, work exactly like your real organ and bio monitoring, you will be monitoring the organ in the bio reactor whether its function is similar to the original organ. Okay. So, this step is called as post processing. So, let us see these steps in detail. The step 1 is pre processing. So, here the pre processing primarily deals with the development of computer aided design that is CAD or blueprint of a specific organ. So, here we will be making the blueprint of a specific organ. Okay. So, the design can be uh, derived from digitized image reconstruction of a natural organ or tissue and the imaging data can be obtained using MRI or CT scan of the particular organ. So, the first step is bioimaging of the particular organ, then using this computer aided design you will make the blueprint of the particular organ. So, this step is the pre processing step and step 2 is processing. Here the processing usually refers to a actual computer aided printing or layer by layer placement of cells into a 3D environment using CAD or blueprints. So, here you will be printing that particular organ using this bio printers and the petri dish is filled with water. Here instead of paper you will be using this petri dish. So, it will be filled with the water. So, when the printer prints the cross linker transform the water into jello like substance and which allows the cells to be put in. Once one dish is filled a new one is replaced on top of it. So, this method is repeated until the organ that you want is created. Once the organ is constructed, the petri dishes are removed and all that left is the organ. So, here the supporting biocompatible jelly is the bio paper and your cell is a bio ink. The spherical cell aggregate it is your bio ink. So, your cells will be printed on the particular uh, bio paper. Okay. So, once the one layer is finished, then you will keep the another layer of bio paper and again you print the cells. So, it is layer by layer assembly of the cells. So, once all the cells are fused together, then you can remove this bio paper. So, here the bio ink spirites are printed into layer of bio paper gel. Okay. So, the additional layers can be printed to build the object. So, once the cells are fused, okay, so you can remove this bio gel or bio paper and you will get the final living tissue. So, here the bio ink plus bio paper 
you can bioprint the complete organ. So, let us see this in detail. So, here the organs could be built up layer by layer by printing clumps of cells onto a gel. So, that turns solid when warm and once the cells have fused, the gel can be removed simply by cooling it. So, here you can see here this clumps of cell, this yellow color one, these are the clumps of cell. So, these are printed layer by layer and, and these are printed on a thermoreversible gel. So, it will be in gel form when this in warm condition and once it is printed, you can remove this gel by simply cooling it. This is your bio paper and on the top of the bio paper, you are going to print these cells. So, once it is printed, you can put the another paper on the top and you can print the another layer of cells. Similarly, when you printed all the cells, so these cells will fuse together. And once it is fused, we can remove the bio paper. by simply cooling it. So, here at what temperature? So, it will form a jelly like substance that is a, it is a thermo responsive gel. So, when you cool it, you can easily remove the bio paper and finally, you will get the desired organ. So, this is the overall step of organ printing. So, let us see this uh, bio printers in details. So, the bio printers have three major components. So, the first one is hardware used, the next one is type of bio ink and third one is the material it is printed on. So, here the bio ink is a material made from living cells that behaves much like a liquid and allowing people to print in order to create a desired shape. And to make the bio ink, researchers create a slurry of cells, okay. So, that can be loaded into a cartridge and inserted into a specially designed bio printer. And it will be printed on a uh, gel like substance that is your bio paper. So, let us see the bio ink in details. So, here the bio ink, as I told you earlier, these are cells. So, these are prepared by mixing cells with bio compatible materials, for example, hydrogels. And suitable hydrogels are selected based on the organ which you want to print. And these are some of the bio ink materials, you can use the collagen, alginate or fibrin. So, these are the widely used uh, uh, bio ink materials, collagen, fibrin and alginate. The reason is, it has a very good uh, bio compatibility and homogeneously incorporate cells and growth factors and processed under mild conditions and easy chemical modification and also sol gel transition. So, let us see the bio paper in details. So, these are the various examples of bio paper. We can make a thermosensitive bio paper based on agarose, collagen and gelatin and also pH sensitive bio paper that is on HP and C and also ionic cross-linking alginate and uh, photo polymerizable PEG based or PVA based bio paper. So, out of these many bio papers, fibrin hydrogel and alginate hydrogel, these are very good uh, materials for biofabrication. So, this fibrin hydrogel have very good cell attachment property and cell proliferation properties and also cell differentiation and tissue growth. Okay. And here in alginate hydrogel, it has a very good mechanical property and it also supports the 3D structure and arrange the cells and proteins and growth factors. So, let us see the type of bio printers. So, there are again three types. These are inkjet printers, extrusion printers and laser assisted bio printers. So, let us see this in details. The first one is inkjet printers. So, these are mainly used in bio printing for fast and large scale products. Okay. So, there is a type of inkjet printer called drop and demand. So, this printer print materials in exact amounts. So, it will minimize the cost as well as the waste. So, here this inkjet bio printer is divided into two types uh, thermal and physioelectric. So, this thermal inkjet printers electrically heat the print head to produce air pressure pulses. So, that force droplets from the nozzle. And here, this acoustic printers uses pulses formed by piezoelectric or ultrasound pressure. So, based on that, it will deposit the cells on the particular uh, bio paper. 
So let us see this uh, next type that is extrusion printers. Okay. So here this extrusion printer prints cells layer by layer. It is also just like a 3D printing. And uh, in addition to just cells, here the extrusion printers may also use hydrogels infused with cells. Okay. So here this micro extrusion printers use pneumatic or mechanical like piston or screw dispensing system to extrude the continuous beads of the material or cells. The third one is laser assisted bioprinter. So here the printer utilizes lasers okay, and the laser provides high resolution printing but these printers are little bit costly. And here this laser assisted printers use lasers to focus on the absorbing substrate to generate pressure. So that propels the cell containing material onto the collector substrate. So let us see the comparison of bioprinters types. So it depends on the organ which you want to print and also depends on the material. So you have to select the suitable bioprinter and each has its own advantages and disadvantages. For example, in case of cell viability, so this laser assisted bioprinter have more cell viability and in case of printing speed, so the inkjet printer is very fast when compared to the other two types. So in case of printer cost, so this inkjet printer is low and this micro extrusion is medium and the laser assisted printer is very high. So you have to select the bioprinter according to the type of organ which you want to print. And let us see the ideal material properties for bioprinting. So the selection of appropriate materials for use in bioprinting and their performance in a particular application depends on several features. The first one is printability that is the properties that facilitate handling and deposition by bioprinter and it may include the viscosity, gelation methods and rheological properties. The next one is biocompatibility. The printed organ should be compatible to the biological system. So here the materials should not induce undesirable local or systemic responses and it should also contribute actively and controllably to the biological and functional components of the construct. Next one is degradation kinetics and byproducts. So here the degradation rate should be matched to the ability of the cells to produce their own EZM. So when the scaffold degrade, so before that scaffold degrade, the particular cell should make its own extracellular matrix and the degradation byproducts should be non-toxic. Okay? That means it should be biodegradable. So once the scaffold is degrading, it should not induce any toxic or immune response in the body. Fourth one is structural and mechanical properties. Here the material should be selected based on the required mechanical properties of the construct. So it can range from rigid thermoplastic polymer fibers for strength to soft hydrogels for cell compatibility. So it depends on the organ which you are going to print, you have to select the particular material. And fifth one is important that is the material biomimicry. So here the biomimicry requires the duplication of the shape, framework and the micronomate of the particular organ and tissues. And here the application of biomimicry in bioprinting involves creating both identical cellular as well as extracellular parts of the organ. So in this biomimicry approach, we have to create the same environment. Okay? So that is the important thing. So let us see the step 3 that is your post processing. So the post processing is concerned with the perfusion of printed organs and their biomechanical conditioning to both direct and accelerate the organ maturation. So to maintain the organ, both mechanical and chemical simulations are needed. Okay? So these stimulations send signal to the cells to control the remodeling and growth of tissues. In addition, in recent development, bioreactor technologies have allowed this rapid maturation of tissues, vascularization of tissues and the ability to survive the transplants. So here these bioreactors work in either providing uh, nutrient transport or it can create the microgravity environments. So each type of bioreactor is ideal for different types of tissue. For example, compression bioreactors are ideal for cartilage tissue. So this is your uh, example of post processing. Okay? So here this artificially printed heart is growing in a bioreactor. So these are the components of post processing. So the first one is metrogens, the next one is biomonitoring. Okay? So in the bioreactor we are going to keep the artificially printed organs. So as I told you earlier, this metrogens means chemical signals or mechanical signals. So that will uh, provide the real environment to these artificial organs. Okay? And in biomonitoring, we will be monitoring the metabolism of the artificial printed organs, whether it is 
performing like your original organ. So here the scientists have created a, a new electronic membrane so that could replace pacemakers and they made a, a membrane using like a spider web like network of sensors and electrodes so which will continuously monitor the heart's electrical activity and in future it could deliver electrical shocks to maintain a healthy heart rate. So here researchers used a computer modeling technology and uh, printed this uh, prototype membrane and they fit into rabbit's heart and they checked it whether it is working properly in a rabbit heart okay. and in this rabbit heart outside the body in a nutrient and oxygen rich solution it is working perfectly like a real heart. So, in future it could be useful for human application also. So, let us see some of the other human scale bioprinted tissues. The first one is a two dimensional tissue. So, like a skin and cartilage. So, that was already printed using inkjet bioprinting systems okay, by Wake Forest Institute for Regenerative Medicine. And similarly, they also printed this heart valve and trachea and using micro extrusion bioprinted technique. So, similarly, they have also printed solid organs like kidney using laser bioprinting as well as micro extrusion bioprinting technology. And here the time frame for the development of 3D bioprinted tissues depends on the uh, organ which you want to print. So, in case of two dimensional it, it require very less time and in case of solid organs it need more time. So, as the complexity of the tissue increases new approaches will be needed to overcome the challenges of creating them by bioprinting. So, here the 2D organs have already been fabricated and tested and this will be likely to be one of the first prototypes and which could be transmitted in the patients and next one is hollow tubes including blood vessels okay. So, uh, scientists have already developed hollow tubes and uh, it is in the clinical trial okay. and the third one is solid organs these are the most complex and there are still many challenges to overcome especially in achieving the vascularization and intervention. So, let us see the what are the challenges. So, this group have printed this uh, artificial kidney in 7 hours, but these are not functional in humans. So, why does not it work? Because it is difficult to create the blood vessels between tissue layers and organs have many specialized functions difficult to replicate. So, this team came up with some new uh, solutions to overcome this uh, problem. So, they created a sugar template that can help shape development of a vascular network for artificial organs and after network is printed cells are inserted and network then grows ok. So, here the sugar template is dissolved after completion of the development. So, let us see the role of uh, nanotechnology in organ printing. So, here we can uh, biofabricate the Janus like tissue spheroids using microfluidics. So, Janus particles means that these are special type of nanoparticles whose surface have two or more distinct physical properties. So, in this case uh, Janus like spheroids, so spheroids are the clumps of cells and it is also having the magnetic properties. So, using these uh, magnetic properties we can uh, assemble this using the external magnetic field. So, once it is assembled in a particular shape then these cells will fuse together and form the particular organ or the particular tissue. So, you can see here at 0 hour these all the tissue spheroids are assembled using magnetic field and at the 14th hour it forms a branch structure as a result of fusion of closely placed tissue spheroids. And let us see how we can um, make some technologies for magnetic levitation of tissue spheroids. The first approach is we can have the cells labeled with magnetic particles and the second approach is we can have the tissue spheroid into hydrogel containing magnetic nanoparticles and the third approach is engaging the tissue spheroid in magnetic micro scaffolds. We can make this uh, lock and hook like structures and we can make this kind of locky balls ok. So, these locky balls are interlockable micro scaffolds for engaging the living tissue spheroids. So, using this approach we can make this kind of shapes and in this we can load the tissue spheroids. So, you can see here this is a section of lucky balls which is having magnetic nanoparticles inside this. So, the red color is the magnetic nanoparticles and this one is lucky ball with magnetic surfaces and third one is lucky ball 
uh, with the functionalized magnetic nanoparticles on the surface. So, this is the uh, robotic tissue spherites biofabricator okay. So, using this we can make the micro scaffold that is our locky balls in a molded agarose hydrogel and in that we can seed the cells and we can make the tissue spherite formation in the locky balls. So, let us see the design elements of clinical robotic bioprinters. So, based on this locky uh, balls, we can make clinical robotic bioprinter. So, here this one is your tissue spheroids harvester, it is based on magnetic levitation of tissue spheroids. And here we can use that and make the clinical robotic bioprinter. And uh, this tissue spheroids are harvested from the multi wells, okay, and uh, it can be translocated and dispersed into the living tissue using magnetic levitation. So, this is a computer aided design of nozzle of clinical robotic bioprinter. So, it contains several channels. So, two channels for fibrinogen and thrombin and one channel for tissue spheroids okay. and additional channel for pressurized air for enabling fibrin hydrogel spraying. So, similarly we can make the uh, portable uh, printer for skin. Okay. So, it is an adapted inkjet printer to provide on site printing of skin for soldiers with life threatening burns. So, here the skin cells are placed in sterilized ink cartridge along with a material to support them and printed directly on the wound. So, here you can print the particular cells okay, on the wound side directly. So, here the nanotechnology not only for uh, printing the artificial organs, we can also use the nanotechnology to preserve the tissue. So, usually the organs will be stored at 320 degrees Fahrenheit, okay. so, but the organs can be stored for long. So, for example, we can store the heart or lungs only for 4 hours because they get damaged when you try to warm them up. Okay. So, due to this more than 60 percent of donor hearts and lungs are not transplanted. So, with this new method the tissue can be rewarmed with no sign of damage and without any contamination. So, here the scientists are using silica coated iron oxide. Okay. So, this will be applied to the tissue and the external magnetic field was then activated. So, it will cause the nanoparticles to warm up and provide even heating throughout the tissue. So, here none of the nano warm tissue showed any sign of damage okay, unlike the control tissue which was slowly reheated over ice. And this nanoparticles could be washed away during the process and it will prevent the any contamination associated issues and ensuring that this method is viable for tissue preservation. So, let us see the another approach. Okay. So, that is organ desolation approach. So, instead of printing the complete organ, we can use this approach and we can decelerize the organ from the donor. So, let us see this approach in detail. So, we can have the customized organ using this approach. The first one is for example, if you want to construct a new heart, so we can remove all the cells from the donor heart and it will leave the only protein scaffold. Then we can inject the cells and grow on the top of this heart okay. and we can give the growth factors and mechanical simulation and we, we can make the customized organ. So, the first step is detergents are pumped into the aorta and filling the arteries that feed the heart okay. and these detergents flow through these blood vessels and dissolve all the cells. Then once the cells are removed, so you will be left with only the particular scaffold. Then we can uh, precursor cells can be pumped into blood vessels and heart muscle precursor cells can be injected into the muscle spaces. So, when the patient cells are grown on the particular scaffold and this can be uh, transferred to the bioreactor. So, in the bioreactor a pulsing flow of nutrient will force this heart to beat and we can also give the electrical stimulation and which will help the heart muscles to contract on their own and in the bioreactor it will work like a exact heart. And once it is uh, monitored in the bioreactor and we can transplant it to the patient. So, this is a recent research, uh, they have grown this uh, heart tissue on the spinach leaves and they also follow the same approach. So, here the spinach leaf is stripped off its plant cells through a process called deceleration using a detergent and this process leaves beyond the leaf vasculature and here the cells were cultured on the top of these decelerized leaves. You can see here at day 0 it is a spinach leaf and they removed these cells from the spinach leaf and at day 7 it is completely decelerized 
and it's left with only vasculature. So the scientists have used this as a scaffold and they grown this uh, beating human heart cells on the decelerized leaves. So you can see here in this animation, so this uh, plant leaf vasculature it is act like your blood vessels for growing the uh, heart cells on this leaf scaffold. So let us see the, some of the benefits of this organ printing. So one of the major benefit is uh, we are going to take the patient's own cells. So that will remove the possibility of immunorejection and also here this organ will not wear out or need any occasional maintenance like your fully mechanical organ transplant. And also this 3D printing technology will eliminate the need for the scaffold and we can bypass the organ donor list. And another benefit is uh, using this uh, computer aided design, we can make the customized organ which will suit the particular patient. So let us see some of the difficulties and limitations in this uh, organ printing technology. So the main thing is it is difficult to print vascularization in an organ. So effective blood flow in the organs has been a major roadblock. And again the lifespan of the organs is very limited. It can range from few minutes to days. So that is the longevity of organ needs to be worked on before they can be transplanted into the patient. And some organs have advanced functions beyond movement and storage and filtration. For example, the liver's ability to regenerate, so which have not been replicated in this lab made organ. So these are the future goals. The first one is uh, developing more refined printers, so which can print even smaller details. So this will eliminate the need to make separate vascular system for the organs. And also it can increase the uh, uh, lifespan of the artificially printed organs. Okay. And also we can reduce the cost of this technology so that it can be made available to more people. So as a summary of this lecture, so in this lecture we have learned what is organ printing and what are the types of 3D printing and we also learned various 3D bioprinting approaches okay. and also we have learned what is organ deceleration approach and also the role of nanotechnology in organ printing. So I will end my lecture here, I thank you all for listening to this lecture, I will see you in another interesting lecture.